Hey groups, we are into March. I hope you're enjoying this little shot of warm weather we're having. Um, I'm excited to continue in our series today on Distinct and um, give you guys some questions that I hope you're able to wrestle with and grow deeper together in. Um, we just wrapped up Leviticus this weekend. Uh, we spent uh, the service really going through the whole book of Leviticus. And Leviticus is a book that is a bit terrifying when you look at it as far as what, what actually can we get out of Leviticus as Christians today? Because it feels like easily that uh, a lot of the laws don't apply to us today. But I love that um, as I was studying and spending some time into it, realizing that even though many of the laws may be different for today, um, seeing God's heart behind those things uh, really opened my eyes to uh, really the God we serve and how and what God values in a different way. Um, and I also love that in the, towards the end of Leviticus, as we looked at the uh, sacrifices and offerings that we're called to make, um, how Jesus is the answer for all of those things. Um, and that we can't earn God's love by doing all the things the right way, all of those offerings, all of those specific laws, 613 laws in Leviticus, we, there's no way we can possibly be perfect in that. Um, and Jesus is the answer to our sin, um, that atonement piece of it. And I'm so excited. Um, the, the conversations I hope you guys have today, I hope they're rich. Um, and kids, if you are in the room, go ahead and check out the kids' questions, leaders, you can walk them through. And then adults will jump right into group's content. All right, number one, remember from last week, the challenge from last week, did you notice the presence of God more when you committed to praying Ephesians 3.18? Number two, this week we have looked at Leviticus and the question in this is what are your initial thoughts about when you hear the book of Leviticus? Is it similar to mine where you're like, oh, this is not story and this is not narrative, it's law. How do we, how do we approach this? What, what are your initial thoughts and why do you think those are your first thoughts about the book? All right, number three, uh, we find at the end of Exodus, the people of Israel finish the uh, completion of the tabernacle. Here's the question is, what do you know about the tabernacle and why is the tabernacle important? Why does it matter for our story? All right, question number four. I want to start with the B section of this a minute. What rule do you remember your parents putting in place when you were growing up? Is there like an obscure, obscure rule where you're like, why was that in place? Or what one do you remember that sticks out in your mind? And why do you think that was a rule? Because as we look at the book of Leviticus, we realize that it is surrounded by laws that talk about sacrifice, about purity, about offerings. Um, when we look at Leviticus, that is what we see. What is the purpose of all of these sacrifices? Leviticus 16 is, if, if you have your Bible in front of you, it is literally titled or the heading in it is the Day of Atonement. Before, before we ask questions, I want you to look at Leviticus 16, 20 through 22, and then also Leviticus 16, 29 through 34. And then we'll have a few questions for you. All right, question A, 
What sticks out to you about the Day of Atonement in that? And what does the passage tell you about humanity? God and human's relationship with God. What does that look like? For number six, I want you to start by reading Hebrews 10, verses 1 through 18. And I find this so fascinating. St. Augustine um, has this quote, really this famous line that he says. It says this, in the Old Testament, the new, being the New Testament, is concealed. And in the new, New Testament, the old is revealed. How do you see that happening in these verses in Hebrews? All right, seven, and here is our challenge for this week. Pray that God would give you the understanding that you desire to be in a relationship with you. Um, in the Old Testament, he dwelt in the tabernacle and he, the priests offered animal sacrifices on the behalf of the people. Now, under the new covenant, he dwells inside of believers and Jesus offered himself on your behalf. So pray that God would give you the understanding and desire to pursue that relationship. All right, we talked about in the message this week to respond and obey God out of the love he has for us. So pray that you'll obey God this week and step into that in a new way. All right, groups, if you've still got some time and want to have some further discussion, uh, there is something in the New Testament. Hebrews 9 is a chapter that brings to life the tabernacle and who Jesus is in that. Um, So take a look at that chapter. It is super eye-opening. When we talk about the Old Testament relating to the New Testament, that is a chapter that combines them very in a very real way. So check that out in the few of the questions in there. Also, there's um, a song that I think you'll really relate to if you've got the time. So check that out. Otherwise, groups, hope you guys have a great week. Enjoy the warm weather. I hope it sticks around for a bit and it's not Michigan saying, hey, catch a glimpse of some good weather and then we're going to smoke you with snow again. Hope that's not the case. Hey, Have a great week. We will see you guys soon.